We've been talking about the meaning of life, why we're all here, why you're here, why we exist at all, what the purpose of this whole universe is, and why this earth is spinning madly around in space at thousands of miles an hour. We've been discussing why all that has taken place. And particularly, we've been discussing some of the bewildering phenomena in our own personal lives, particularly the phenomenon that we often refer to as Jekyll and Hyde syndrome. You may remember Robert Louis Stevenson's novel called The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Mr. Hyde was Dr. Jekyll's alter ego, I suppose. Uh, Dr. Jekyll was a very generous philanthropic doctor in a certain area of London, and uh, he was used to helping the poor and needy and uh, even giving them medical service without any cost to them. And uh, he developed, of course, inside himself a character that was the exact opposite of what people knew him to be. There developed inside him a character that was violent and filled with greed and selfishness and anger and uh, a character that always wanted his own way, whatever agony or pain it cost other people. Eventually, of course, this Mr. Hyde burst out with the help of some drugs that Dr. Jekyll invented and began to roam the streets of London doing all kinds of violent deeds. And uh, Louis Stevenson, of course, was pointing out that most of us have the same experience in our own personal lives. We have a side of us that wants to live the way we were meant to live. And then we have another being within us. It seems almost to be another person that wants to do the very opposite of what we want. And so many of us uh, do see that there must be a creator of the world uh, in the light of the order and design that we perceive in the universe, and he must be at least as personable as we are if he was to make us persons. And he must be the father of Jesus who lived in the first century and was certainly more than a human being. He was the only religious leader that was able to overcome death, Muhammad uh, or Zoroaster or Confucius or Buddha never did that. So it is reasonable to believe that he was indeed the son of the creator of the world and that the things he talked about as being his father's attitude to us are probably true. When he said, therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your food, what you shall eat, nor about your clothing, what you shall put on. Look at the birds of the air. They toil not, neither do they reap. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. And look at the lilies of the field. They do not sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns. And yet Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass which today is and tomorrow is cast into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? And Jesus implied that if we did the things we were meant to do when we were put here on earth, if you fulfilled the function that God created you here to fulfill, you did the job that you're given, you've been given talents to do and did it faithfully, then that he would make sure that your needs were met sometimes by your salary, sometimes your wages, sometimes by the way your cash flow works, sometimes by mysterious means. But Jesus told us that uh, the Creator would do that. And most of us uh, feel, yes, there's possibly a Creator like that, and He probably will take care of us. And we do try to believe that. And we try to trust him for that. So when the bank account goes into overdraft, we try not to allow the churning of our stomach to dominate our worry and our anxiety. We try to put our trust in God and we try to say, yes, now, his son said that he would provide all that we needed and we've been in this kind of situation before and it's come out all right, so it'll probably come out all right again. And we try to do that, but there's something inside us. There's a nature that has developed down through the years of our own lives and down through the centuries of our forebears' lives that is used to depending on itself and on the things that we can get from this world of material possessions that will give us that safety and security that we were really meant to trust our Creator for. And so there is inside us a dreadful battle goes on, a terrible conflict 
between this Mr. Hyde within us, this monster within, this old self, or Jesus and uh, the Bible, that old book that we so rarely read today, they called it the old nature or the old self. Sometimes they actually called it the sinful nature. Because, of course, you and I have a whole wrong idea of sin. We tie sin to immorality and to crime. No, immorality and crime, those are human concepts. But sin itself is primarily living as if there's no God. It's living depending on the world of things and people and circumstances for your security, your sense of significance and your happiness, instead of living in dependence on God for your security and your significance and your happiness. That's all that sin is find that there is within us a nature that is full of sin, that is full of independence of God, full of dependence on people. That's why we have such men fear. That's why we sweat when the boss doesn't approve of us. That's why we get all worried when our teacher doesn't think well of us. That's why we are so anxious to be little Uriah heaps that try to please everybody because there is a nature inside us that has got used to living in dependence on people's opinions and people's praise and people's pr approval rather than our creators. And so we are afraid of people and are afraid of their approval and afraid of their disapproval and afraid of what they think and what they criticize us as being. Instead of being dependent on our Father for his opinion and not caring what anybody else thinks. Our nature has turned the other way. And so we find within us a sinful nature, a nature that is full of sin and full of a desire to depend on things and people and circumstances for our security and our happiness and our sense of significance. And of course, it is doomed to continual futility and frustration because nobody thinks as much of us as our dear Father who made us. Nobody thinks as much of us as our dear Creator who gave himself for us. Nobody will provide for us the resources that we need throughout this life as he will do. Finally, the greatest banker in the world can't provide for us the moment after we die. Finally, the kindest father in the world can't clothe us when we catch an incurable disease. So our sinful nature or our old nature, our old self, is a hideous thing because it makes us want to depend on the world of things and circumstances and people and yet it is never satisfied with those things. It can never get enough satisfaction from those things because we were made not to get our supply of significance and happiness and security from those, but from God himself. And so the evil old self-nature inside us has bent us so towards the world of things and circumstances and people that we cannot live any other way, and yet it never can get enough satisfaction through those intermediates that, that as will satisfy us, satisfy the good nature, the real nature that the Creator implanted in us at the beginning. And, of course, that nature that still draws us towards truth and reality. I mean, there is a part of you that is delighted to trust to the wind. There is a part of you that is delighted to just risk it and to have the delight that you had as little children and trust that things will come out okay. There's part of you that kicks over the traces and says, it doesn't matter what they think of me. It doesn't matter if they criticize me to death. That doesn't matter. There's somebody else that thinks of something about me. There is a part of us that rises to truth and rises to reality. And yet there is this miserable, evil nature within us that seems at times, as in Robert Louis Stevenson's novel, to grow and grow and dominate the good nature within us until almost all the good nature seems utterly suppressed and only the evil old self-nature seems to live. And it seems as we go on living that it just becomes more and more subtle within us. And so we try all kinds of ways to get rid of it. How can you get rid of it? Well, there is a way. Let's talk about